So this is a car I've had an eye on for a long time. Um, when I cleared out the large collection of P6s in Cheadle Hume in uh, Manchester, just outside of Manchester, Stockport, um, Pete's friend Richard, if you're watching this, thank you for telling me about this car, on the way back, um, because Pete was there obviously, um, they drove past this car. Now this car is a 77, possibly 78, 2.2 uh, TC. And as you can see from the photos on screen, it was on axle stands for donkey's ages. Loads of people tried to buy it, no one had succeeded. Um, anyway, I was planning on writing to the place and saying, look, it's a car for sale, etc. Um, long story short, a fan of mine, Jeff, contacted me and said, um, the family wants to sell the car because the owner's sadly got a brain tumour and can't work on it anymore. I um, mean, he's in no state to do anything, so that's why it's been sat outside for so long. Um, so, Jeff told me about it, and um, I spoke to the family and ended up purchasing this car. Now, I originally purchased it as a donor car for Kismet um, because it's the cheapest way to do it. But, unfortunately, in some ways unfortunate, um, it's turned out to be too good to break, so it looks like I have another full pot. <laughs> But at some point it'll be a cool video because I can compare the twin carb to the single carb. But uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is quite a special car. The 2.2 TC is one of the rarest models. Um, they don't seem to survive very well at all. Um, I'm surprised the car this late has survived at all, really, because well, towards the end when they were making these cars, they didn't really care. So <laughs> it's surprising this has survived. No boot handle on this one, which is kind of weird because some of them have them, some of them don't. Um, this had MOT, when was it, John? 2017? 2017. Yeah, MOT in 2017. Little John's here, by the way. This is his garage vibe. He's kindly lent me for a short time. Um, yeah, this is this was on the road, MOT 2017. Um, so we're going to have a quick walk around of the car, and then we're going to see if we can get it to run. Now, we've been told that it does run, but I've been told that with the last 45 cars I've owned, so, you know, you tend to be a bit sceptical. Um, in terms of rot, it's... It's not so bad. It's It's gone a bit on this lip. Um, but it's gone a bit here. I apologize for the state of my nails. I, I need a manicure. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gone here. Um, and it's gone a bit under this corner, under here. But, and there's a big but, this car is actually pretty damn good. Um, it has a full stainless steel exhaust system. It's had new tyres at some stage, and amazingly, a lot of it actually works. So, this roof is knackered. It needs a new roof, for sure, at some stage. But it's actually got a Webasto. Now, I've, I tend to stay away from cars with Webasto sunroofs, because reasons I'll show you in a minute, they leak. Now, a lot of owners say their cars don't leak, but if you're getting condensation in your car, that is water. So, yes, your car is leaking. Now, D-posts. This is always a common issue. But this car, again, <laughs> is remarkably good. Um, it's also got rear seat belts in it. Um, often with these later cars, they had basically leftover parts um, from Rover. Um, when they were building the SD1s, late, late P6s often had quite a lot of options because they were literally using up the parts that were left over. Um, as you can see, it's got the dual clocks in it, the rounded clocks. It's got the tallest gear stick, which is the same kind Kismet has. Um, it also has a few other bits and bobs. It's got the wing guard mirrors. The other bits and bobs it has is, other than this Webasto sunroof, it's got someone has fitted an electric fan at some stage, um, which is quite interesting. The car has only done 79,000 miles, 79,810 miles. And remarkably, loads of things work, as I've already said. So, one thing that's quite amusing is, what can you see here that is wrong? I'll give you a few seconds to figure it out. For those of you who guessed it, well done. Um, these cables are in the wrong way round. So, the petrol reserve should be on the left and the choke on the right. Someone's fitted these in the wrong way round at some stage. <laughs> um, which is quite amusing. So, one thing it's definitely had... Someone has fitted an air horn to it for some unknown reason, uh, but things like lights, indicators actually work, which is quite remarkable. So if we hop out a minute, if hop out the car a second, you can see there's this moss um, all over it. This is a rare thing because a lot of the time cars that look really bad often are. 
that's kind of obvious, but sometimes you get really lucky and you find a car that isn't as bad, it looks really bad, but it's actually not. Um, this car's actually pretty decent. So the reason I bought it was, Kismet was originally a twin carb, um, and I bought this car to pull the engine out of, and the exhaust manifold, etc, etc, so that Kismet can be a, tw a twin carb again. Um, it's the cheapest way to do it is to buy a donor car, but um, unfortunately for Kismet, uh, this car was actually pretty good, so I'm probably just going to buy an SC as a donor car, because Kismet doesn't really need to be a TC as a priority. What I'll probably do is, because Kismet's got a blown head gasket, we're pretty sure it does, we're going to be replacing that at some stage. It's got an electric fan, as I already said, here it is. You don't really need an electric fan on a four-cylinder, it's pretty unnecessary. Um, they don't tend to overheat. V8s, on the other hand, are pretty prone for overheating issues because you've got a big engine in a small engine bay and there's not a lot of airflow, um, which means that, of course, you're not gonna, the engine isn't getting enough cooling. Uh, the P6 was never designed for a V8. This is the ultimate P6, in my mind, the 2.2 TC, or the 2000 TC, but the 2.2 um, is the ultimate in my mind. So. What we're going to do is we're going to do the normal checks, see if it's got spark, um, we've got some petrol, and we're going to see if, if she'll go. We've been told it will run, um, but we're just going to check spark and a few other things, and uh, yeah, we'll see where we are. So, shall we see if it'll run? We're not going to see, it will. <laughs> shall we get it running? Yeah, it gives five minutes. Yeah, go. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. So while in the car, I've noticed something. There's a mystery switch right here. I'm not sure how well you can see that, um, but there's a little toggle switch, a black toggle switch down here. So I wonder if that's a kill switch. So if we just turn it over and we're ready to try and start it soon and nothing happens, it doesn't even cough, we'll know that that is the problem because it's we're gonna check for spark, obviously. Um, points look very clean inside, etc., etc. One thing I've noticed is, um, the interior light is on the side on the Webasto cars, and this is actually a Britax roof, um, as you can see. But, amazingly, all around this channel hasn't actually rotted. It's just rotted the, quite badly at the back here. But, we, I mean, I've said it looks the car looks alright. We don't know for sure yet. Um, we need to properly assess it, but from a case for a glance, it needs... The jacking points at the back doing and it wants a bit of the front floor there um sills but it's nothing horrific as uh, what we found so far another thing i noticed is the um fuel pump on the 2.2 tc is different it's well, let me go around this side because of my shadow um i've got a work light in here so this is a different unit this is a, a crappy sealed unit so if this one goes uh, we're in a bit of trouble here but uh no it's the air horn is kind of funny and it works as i've already showed you but we're about ready to see if it'll run, so we're going to pop the battery in and just see what happens. We've got clutch, um, so we'll see if it'll move. Only a little bit, obviously, because it's got no brakes at all. Uh, who needs brakes? Anyway, we'll... Uh, no brakes racing. No brakes, no racing, yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, we'll pop a battery on it and we'll see if we can get any life out of it. I'm sure it'll run. I'm confident it'll go. The petrol smells very recent. So yeah, we, we've taken a sample of the fuel. Oh, which I can actually show you where, where we put it. I don't know. I don't know where we put it, but uh, no, the oh, petrol's it's on the floor though. Yeah, the petrol's clean. It's clean. There's it's no, a bit. It's been settled it's, for it's, a while, so, and no moisture's mm. come out of it, so there's no water in the tank. It's a bit yellow, but it smells decent. I mean, modern fuel tends to go mm. yellow quite quickly. And another but thing is, it still smells good and look. Tasty. The other thing is, John moves out the way. So the air filter looks quite clean. That's been changed fairly recently because that doesn't look dirty at all. Hold that up a minute. Get it out. Oh, for those of you who said John, little John, make a good mechanic. You are right because he's now, again, he's now a mechanic. Congratulations. Yeah, that looks almost brand new. I uh, wouldn't want to work as a mechanic because I'm not very good at dealing with idiots. <laughs> I, just I am an idiot. <laughs> I just probably shout and scream at people, which is uh, probably not the way to do it. But uh, anyway, so we'll cut back to you in a minute, and we'll see if we can get this thing to run. I'm sure it'll go. I don't see why it wouldn't run, so uh, we'll find out. Right, we're ready to see. It's in neutral, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to put my foot on the clutch. Nah, that. Just leave it, right. Give it a kick. Experience. 
giving nine. <laughs> Uh, that battery probably still a bit flat, and I don't think it's got enough guts. Let's have a little fiddle. Go again. Yeah, no. That's got com. It's trying. You can That's hear it. That's got plenty of compression. I was turning that over by hand, and there's definitely some. Uh, Mm. There. I do think that, that that I do think the story that this car was restored ten years ago and it had an engine rebuild is probably true. Yeah, there's enough compression to vouch for that. And yeah. it's not seventy nine thousand miles and isn't loads. It's not a lot, is it? No. Let's have a fiddle. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Right, got a battery. A more manly battery, hopefully it'll turn it's it over. It's not more manly, it's out of a one point six saxo. Yeah, I know it's out of a saxo, but hopefully it has a bit more juice. Go on, kick it. Stop. Yeah, it's not enough juice in it. No. Um, but it also mm. might, it might be the start motor on this, for all we know. So that Saxo battery, it's been used in a while, but it's... Yeah, but there's a big difference between 1.6 and 2.2. A big yeah. bloody difference. Yeah, I mean, that's not... Um, it's, it's the size, mm. da it's the next size down from the battery you're we'll, meant to we'll, have in one of these. We'll see what we can do. Right, we've got a car behind us, hopefully providing enough power. If this doesn't work, it's not going to run, so... Crank Rover. <laughs> oh, fuck. That landed on my foot. Ow. Yeah. All right, no, no time to worry about my injuries. I'm going to try to switch the other way. <laughs> Joke's on. Yeah. I'm going to take it off. Don't take it all the way off. Put it half out. I'm going to hold it. Half out, lock it in half. Excellent, we got oil pressure. It's running. Yeah, I want to get it holding at 100, uh, sorry, 1000, and then disconnect Saxon. It'll need choke though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How much choke? <laughs> Hold it there, hold it there. Look at that. That's running. That's running. Oil lights out. They're fine. Yeah, leave them with me. I'm going to take this light. What we got? Bang in the middle for oil pressure. Yeah, 50 PSI is, is, is good. 50 PSI on fast idle is good. That's good, that's good. I can't hear any rattling from the cam chain. It sounds good. Leave it there. I'll hold this light a minute. I'm gonna go around the back. Yeah, Saxo's there. There's no bad smoke or anything. Exhaust beat sounds even. It's all right. Sounds good. This car wants to live. It, yeah, it really wants to live. It's alive. It's alive. Yeah, oil pressure's bang in the middle. The alternator's charging. Barely. Let it run for a bit. Yeah, let it run for a bit. Yeah. Can we see if that switch does anything in a minute? Hmm. How much water's in it? Uh, it was still about there. But Take the cap off. 
Don't let it build pressure. Hasn't been running long enough to build anything. Yeah. Do you want to kill it and put some water in it? Yeah. And then kill we'll it, put some water in it. Turn it off. That's running very well. Bit smoky, but that's running well. Bit smoky. She ain't running what well, probably seven years. I'll give her that. Good. It's it's been run more recently than that. But, yeah, but I mean, it's it, been a while. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna put sacks. Probably there. a slight hole in the exhaust or oh, something. Oh no, we're gonna. Oh fuck! Then you keep sacks up there. Hmm. Right, we'll put some water in it and uh, yeah, we'll carry on. Right, we uh, got some water in it, so let's fire it up again. That's astonishing how well that starts. Ch no choke at all, right? A little bit. It's a bit blowy from the exhaust, but that's running pretty well. No bad noises. That's running well. It's just amazing how well some of these cars run. Even after being stood for so long. Yeah, it's going to top up the rat a bit. I know this is sort of poorly filmed and it's a bit like an art piece or a, a shadow puppet performance, but you know, it's all about the content and this is what you want to see. Rover rescues. Yeah, there's no bad noises at all. They, they always rattle a teeny bit, but there's no, there's no real bad rattling or anything from the engine. The chain tensioners tend to go because they're hydraulically controlled. It's actually behind that plate right there. I don't know where you can see that. This little plate on the side. I did that job on Kismet and it was entertaining, shall we say. No, that runs really well. When the thermostat opens, that level's going to drop or overflow because the coolant, the expansion tank is full. So we'll see what happens. How we look in temperature. Is there anything on a temperature gauge? Uh, temperature gauge either doesn't work or the car's not hot enough yet. More than likely the latter, it doesn't work. It's probably just not up to temperature. Yeah, pushing out the Yeah, we've overfilled it. We'll give it a few minutes and uh, see if it revs okay once it's warmed up. Um, it's important to check if it revs alright and make sure you know the carbs are set up right, timing, blah 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 blah. So yeah, we'll cut back to you then. Right, 
before anyone says anything. Yes, the car was hot before we revved it. Why was I revving it? Well, you want to make sure that, you know, everything's free, the car's all right, blah, 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 because when you rev a car when it's hot, I, this was how we used to fault diagnose Kismet when we first got it. If you rev the car and it, it goes, -da 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 -da, it slowly, slowly stuttery revs, or it doesn't rev at all, or it dies, those are signs for diagnosis. For example, Kismet, it was electrical things, points, timing, etc., etc. But no, th this runs remarkably well. Um, it really does want to live. Um, it has got rot issues, as I've said. Um, it's not as bad as Kismet is. And before he says, everyone says, any sort oh God, before anyone says anything, oh, you don't bother with Kismet, scrap it, blah, blah, blah. It's being done. Um, I've been selling most of my collection. I've got two or three more cars to sell, but I'll have enough money to finally get on and do it. I owe it to everyone who's built the original channel um, and close, close friends who've been involved with the cars but have sadly died. Um, it, yeah, it, it's it's got to be done. But uh, yeah, but there is a distinct possibility that this car might be something quite special. We're not sure yet. Um, you will know in the next episode. The next episode will be the first time washing it. We're going to give it a wash. People love that sort of car. AMS, AS, uh, ASMR. Is that how you say it? Those... Yeah, well, that's the very quiet noises. Yeah. This will just be like them oddly, those weird, oddly satisfying videos where it just peels off. But yeah. it will look a billion times better once we clean all this moss off of it because I think the white paint underneath, although mm. old, will probably look fairly shiny. I actually forgot to say something um, on the subject of paint. Um, we discovered, or I discovered, when I was here, when I was working on the car, you probably can't, you can just about see that, that's avocado, god my nails are disgusting, I'm sorry, I'll cut them, I promise, um, <laughs> that's actually avocado, this car used to be avocado green, just like Mark Gray's VVC, that was the last V8 off the production line. Um, All the later cars tended to be that. Quite a few of them were, yeah, um, because it was an SD1 colour, I'm pretty sure. Fucking or Trident Green, they called it. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure Avocado Green was an SD1 colour, related British Leyland colour. But, um, no, the car, the engine is very, very sound. Um, I couldn't hear even a hint of big end or chain or anything. Um, it's surprisingly good. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be structurally okay. Um, but we won't know until we fully... Uh, strip it to assess it. Um, the wings need to come off. Things need to come apart in order to know. But uh, yeah, no, we'll we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment down below, show your friends, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching this one, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Cheers and go.